So hello everyone, we are sketching this today. So this is a sort of abstract selection of flowers and they probably ended up a bit like poppies, but what we actually did is we used some wet on wet watercolors using this big brush. And then we found some structure using an ink pen and we ended up here. What, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, and I mean, let's, let's just get sketching it. So let's see how we can create some fun, vivid flowers using a little bit of abstract ink and watercolor. Gonna start with my little spray. We're just gonna spray the page. Now we're not gonna spray the whole page because we want to create an element of randomness. Some of our strokes being dry, sort of dry watercolor strokes and some just merging and blending with that water on the page. And let's produce some nice ready pinky flowers today. So let's start off with that red, bit of Scarlet Lake, one inch brush, and just produce a couple of shapes. This is where we're placing on the page where we think our, um, our end shapes are gonna be. Got a bit of orange here, this is transparent pyrrole orange. And then a little bit, as we said, of some pink, this quinacridone magenta. You can see these colours are all quite complementary, in many ways very similar, but in many ways also quite different from one another. And just trying to keep some of these shapes separate and then consider where do we want to add in a bit more. So I'm going to actually add in something a bit different, a bit of quinacridone sienna this time. And just touch that in in a couple of places and bring it down, start to suggest some stems. Now whilst we've got these colours doing their thing, we'll start to add in some of those darker tones. And we're imagining, maybe we're imagining it almost like a poppy, so a kind of dark center. If we just touch that in, that dark moon glow in, that's just gonna start spreading and suggesting those lovely dark tones. Same, we can start again, just bringing these sort of stems down and these little touches of color in the background can now start becoming flowers as well. So before long we've got this group, this suggested group of different flowers. Now back to our big brush, let's get some nice green and I'm going to get a little bit of green gold and just find some some leaves in the background and again just touches, keeping some of the shapes separate, letting some of them blend and merge. And then we can use some of that dark and just waft it in, create these little lines within those leaves or whatever they are. And I'm gonna get a bit of a darker green. So I've got a cascade green and that can now come down from those stems as well. And we can start having a bit more idea of where these flowers are emerging from. And just a little bit of lovely chaos on that page as well. Just move things around, find areas you think could do with softening or hardening or whatever. With that in mind, let's get a little bit of tissue and start picking out areas which we want to make lighter so we can separate out some petals, some flowers, create elements of light where we've just got these rich colors at the moment. And this is also gonna create fascinating textures because it's going to be the texture of this tissue that is sort of crafted onto the page. Don't overdo it. So we want to have some of those dark colours remaining. But what this is effectively doing is picking up that water. So now if we come back in with a different brush, so with our small brush, I've got a size 10 round brush here, we're going to be able to start just dropping in colours. And instead of them going everywhere, they're just going to blend with where we've already got water. So these white areas should remain fairly white. And what that means is if we want to, say, create some interesting patterns, we can start again, just adding in these kind of abstract feelings. And where we've picked up the water, do you see how this is quite soft and here it's quite hard because we've picked up the water previously. We can exacerbate that by coming in and just softening even more. Because what we're trying to create now is those suggestive sort of abstract textures which really build into something beautiful on the page. 
I personally I love having these these swirling little sort of features on a page but you don't have to enjoy that you can experiment with other ways of creating a bit of texture in life or keep it nice and simple and controlled as well a little bit of that cracked in magenta because I just want to what I do want is if we you know, a bit of controlled chaos, if that's what we're creating, if that's what we want, then what we also need to do is keep it simple by having that, um, the ideas through the page all quite unified. So having these same abstract swirls rather than having lots of different sort of abstract shapes. And then we can be similar with our black, we can just reintroduce it as a really, this time a really dark colour. And in places, this, this black would be visible through these delicate leaves, wouldn't it? So we can start just introducing the idea that you're seeing through in some places. And then moving down to our leaves, let's do the same thing. Get these sort of abstract swirly shapes working for us. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what you think of these kind of shapes. Is it something which works for you? Is it just my sort of slightly odd neurodiverse brain that um, finds such enjoyment in them. It's genuinely interesting to hear what people think because I'm sure some people will love them and I'm sure some people will be thinking why on earth are you doing that? Another thing which I know people find a little bit controversial, a lot of people love, some people really don't, just getting some nice splashes on the page. For me they're great, this, this randomness that I can't control just absolutely love it. I just love not being able to control everything on the page and having to work with whatever happens. I'm going to start getting a bit of shadow into these leaves now to get some shape because even though it's, we're sort of abstracting this I still want it to make some level of sense. So we've got a dark side of these leaves, we've got the sort of veins that run through the leaves, we've got the the uh, darkness of the stems and the stems all sort of leading somewhere and we can just enrich I think some of these colours as well and then the last bit I'm going to do before we move on to our ink just come in and again make sure that we've got lovely rich colours make sure this green isn't too much overpowering what's meant to be you know it's about the flowers isn't it it's about these bold colors so let's make sure these colors are, are really singing and we found like I found this little flower I'd forgotten to finish there's another one here it's always worth just coming around with these last little touches just making sure you've spotted everything you want to okay then I'm gonna just to finish tiny bit more text with a couple of drops of water which will hopefully create some nice little cauliflower type patterns. And now I'm going to let this dry and see what we've got and see what we need to do with ink to just bring a little bit more structure to it. Okay so we're mostly dry here. What we don't want to do now is overdo it and lose this spontaneity but what we want to do or what I want to do is to bring out a little bit more structure just suggest a few more shapes I'm going to do that with my brush pen here and I'm going to just start by coming up and down some of these stems that she's created and then pulling them apart from the leaves and again we can use these same ideas as like swirls and things to just keep this new medium so this is definitely a different medium this is ink we could be doing this with a fountain pen or something like that but as it's a new medium we, we sort of want to just be keeping the the flow of what's going on pretty much the same it just enables us to get that suggestion of form and shape a bit more quickly a bit more easily and just more vividly than if we use watercolors And do you see how we can just come round, we can find these lovely shapes. 
and we're not totally outlining them. I think if we totally outline them, we would definitely lose that spontaneity. But what we can do is we can suggest some outlines which are not totally the same as the colour. So it sort of overlaps the colour or it goes outside the colour, it includes some of those white edges. As we go higher up we've got bigger flowers which are sort of closer to our field of vision so these lines become a bit bolder. And the same with this one, this is a sort of bigger flower, it's probably closer to us. So just get some bigger bits of line work in there. Whereas these little delicate flowers are very, very much small and can go right the way to the back. And then we can look and see what do we need, where do we need to just get a bit more tone or something going on. And I think probably mostly the base here, so we need it to be grounded, it needs to be coming from something. All of this sort of noise and, and thing, and then a little bit more sort of continuity of these lines which are just exploding outwards. And there, I would say, we're probably done. We could do a couple of little touches if we wanted. We could even, if we're quick enough with this kind of work, we can even come in and we can just smudge some of our ink. See, this isn't this isn't actually soluble ink, but because it's applied quite thickly, we're going to be able to move some of it. We can just smudge that and get different effects and things going. But I don't think we need to do too much of that. So I'm actually going to call this little fun sketch done. Put my initials on it and be perfectly happy with our little abstract sketch. It's a great way to practice those wet on wet watercolour effects. Practice how to bring in structure and accentuate details but without um, putting pressure on yourself, without having a big scene in front of you which you have to get right. So I love doing little things like this. Please let me know what you think. Is this the kind of scene that you enjoy doing? Um, do you think this has worked well? What would you have done differently? Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy, please do like and subscribe. Thank you.